with all the noise we hear in the news lately about the current molestation scandal that's actually standing right on the Pope's doorstep, wherein church prelates demanding his resignation, as well as the Catholic people themselves asking him to resign. And to make matters worse, the Pope is refusing to comment for fear of implicating himself. That all being said, one would think it's as bad as it can get in the Vatican. And yes, this was prophesied to happen with the Catholic Church in our day. That church has been corrupt from day one. And it was declared long ago that in the very last days, everyone will know who the man of sin is. It says in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 that we should let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And as we look around, we know there is a great falling away wherein what's good and moral is now considered evil, and all that's evil is now considered moral and upright, to the point of killing your unborn child and homosexuals being married legally. And yes, that is why Christians are hated globally. Most hate us because of the Bible the obedient Christian lives by, and they know the sinfulness of the world is pointed out in those pages. And so being exposed to the light of truth, that simply angers some people, no matter how gently that truth is presented to them, no matter how much love you bathe it in. And another reason most hate Christians is because the Vatican prelates have claimed to be Christians for centuries. And most people know all about the bold and obvious evils of the Catholic Church. You know, everything from killing hundreds of millions of obedient Christians during the Inquisitions to molesting millions of their children right up to today's world. Still, people believe the Pope is a man of God and should be trusted. Still, with all that history has to say about the evils of all the popes, the cardinals, the bishops, and priests, most are completely unaware of how evil the nuns are. Check this out. We saw nuns kill children the ghost of St. Joseph's Catholic Orphanage. And now I'm not going to read all that's on this page because as you can see by the scroll bar, that would take a long time. Let me just scroll it down a little bit here. It ain't moving too much, is it? This is one huge page. Uh, that, I think that was Sally that goes by there, which we'll be talking about her in a minute. And so I'm not going to share everything that you see here, but I am going to share a few things from this page. But I must warn you that if you're squeamish, you're not going to want to hear this. And yes, it's very bad in the Catholic Church in that they molest and rape children on a daily basis and have been doing so all along as the Didache documents of their own historic past confirmed, and you can even download them now. And some history buffs already know about the tens of thousands of children that are killed by nuns and buried on church property over the centuries that, that just a few years ago started making the news. And especially in Ireland, where 800 children were found buried on church property just last year, not to mention the video I did last May about those two nuns that got caught torturing 60 children in Colombia. But what I'm about to read from this page is absolutely bone chilling. What they did to these precious little boys and girls confirms what prophecy said about this church. And by the way, what I'm about to share is from former residents of America's Catholic orphanage system, who outlined in court transcripts as nothing short of actual torture and extreme bizarre behavior of these nuns. And so as prophesied, this information is now being declared all over the world so as to further confirm the prophecy of 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 that I just read a minute ago as being fulfilled. And just so you know, in America alone, more than 5 million innocent children pass through these Catholic orphanages over the years of their operation. One can only imagine how many were tortured and killed worldwide in every nation on earth. Some of the morbid and demonic acts done to these children, I cannot mention either, as they are quite perverted, to say the least. But what I will share is no doubt going to make some who love children unconditionally do all they can to get the word out about this very evil organization known as the Roman Catholic Vatican. Check this out. Okay, this first excerpt from the article says this. It was a late summer afternoon, Sally Dale recalled, when the boy was thrown through the fourth floor window. Bounced? One of the many lawyers present asked. Well, I guess you'd call it a bounce, she replied, and then he laid still. A nun was standing at the window, Sally said. Sally's falling boy was not the only story of a child who had been pushed from a window. The next one said that the children were forced, you know, because of the food was so bad in this place sometimes, the children were forced to eat their own vomit. Some were dangled upside down out of windows. Some were dangled over wells, and some were dangled over laundry chutes. And this is a huge building, so you're not going to survive any of these falls. One child revealed that 
If L was caught not paying attention, the nuns would take a needle and regularly prick his fingertips. Sally herself described witnessing at least two incidents in which she said a child at St. Joseph's died or was outright murdered. And then speaking of a nun doing this to a little girl, she goes on to say that she lit the match and she held her, you know, the little girl's hand, right over the match, and her hand was touching the flames. And I sat there and I cried and I told them to stop. Another child said that the nun took matches out of her dress and she burned the tips of each one of the little girl's fingers. And then this next one says, a nun came in, picked up a little satin pillow and put it over the baby's face. The baby flailed its arms and legs at first, but when the nun lifted it up, its limbs dangled, which means she killed the little baby in front of all the kids. A woman said she watched a nun hold the baby by its ankles and swing its head against the table until it stopped crying. Now, keep in mind, these are adults relaying what they saw with their own eyes as children in this orphanage. And another one says children were locked in cabinets, in closets, in attics, sometimes for days, sometimes so long they were forgotten. They were told their relatives didn't want them or they were permanently separated from their siblings. They were sexually abused they were mutilated. This next one says that she, well, speaking of a nun who did something to a little boy, it says that she cut him with something very sharp. He didn't know what it was. He just remembered that there was blood everywhere. And the next one says a very sad and very frightening story of a little boy who was electrocuted, whom the nuns made her kiss in his coffin. Again, this is just some bizarre, strange, demonic behavior. It's just insane. And the next one says, sometimes their little legs, oh, and this is the part where, if I read it right in the article, some of the kids were either sat on top of radiators or standing on top of radiators, but they would slip and fall and their legs would get caught in between the radiators. It says, sometimes their little legs would get caught between the wall and the radiator and the little kids would really scream and cry. They would pull them out, the nuns, they would pull them out and some kids would have real nasty burns and blisters from it. And the last one I'm going to read, and I didn't get anywhere near halfway done, but it says, one recalled that the nun had started out hitting the girl with a piece of wood two or three feet long, but it broke. And that's when she reached for the paddle. Eventually, the handle of the paddle snapped. So she got another paddle and used that one until she was finished. And then it says, you could always tell when they were done, one woman explained, because the last one was the hardest. Now, again, I'm going to stop here and... Like I said a minute ago, it's not, I'm not even halfway through the article. If you want to read this, then by all means do so, but it's not going to be an easy read. But please pray for the Catholic people that they finally start to realize how evil their church leaders truly are. They need to get out of that church like the prophecy says. That church is exactly as the Christian Bible warned it would be in the many prophetic statements throughout the Word of God that have already been confirmed in historic record. Thank you for watching. God bless.